is a serial entrepreneur. This man has so many people right now walking around with the I grind different, you know, attitude. And we're grinding different right now. So y'all understand that this man is a father, an amazing, amazing person. He's a servant leader taking time out of his day to day to lead. That makes a difference. A heart to serve and just an amazing person all around. I can't wait <laughs> till he takes over this call. So without first, without further ado, Mr. Nathan Galan, I know you are on the line. Good morning, good morning, good morning, boss brother. What's and up? Listen here, that energy right there is contagious, girl. Raining it and all. You couldn't even tell, man. Thank you so much, Miss Delicia. I really appreciate that heartfelt um introduction. Just one little correction. I ain't no daddy yet. Ain't no daddy yet. <laughs> ain't no daddy yet, but Lord willing, I will be an amazing father. But other than that, man, thank you so much. Your heart to serve. I mean, how many people would take the time? out of their day, driving to a whole nother state and pull over just to serve the masses, man. So kudos to you, man. Thank you so much for that introduction. Um, good morning. Good morning, world. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Nathan Galan. I am 33 years young. Um, I'm from Tampa, Florida. I got introduced to this industry of referral marketing a little over seven years ago, and I was a complete novice. I was a beginner at this thing. I didn't know what to do, how to do it. All I knew is that I wanted more. Anybody feel that same way? Anybody at a point right now in their life that they just wanted more, they don't know how it's gonna come or where it's gonna come from, but you just want more and you know you deserve more. And better yet, not just yourself, but the ones around you deserve more. See, that's where I was in my life seven years ago. I was a school teacher. I did everything the right way. I went to school. I got a job into something I was passionate about, which was kids, and I wanted to make an impact for the future. Um, but what I didn't do was my research on salary. What I didn't do my research on was the time freedom. What I didn't do my research on was how much I could grow and how many people I could bring with me. And so it kind of left me unfulfilled. I loved the, the kid part of it, but I didn't feel like this. My dreams outweigh my bank account. Can anybody relate? And so for me, I wanted to find something to fill that void. So I got introduced to this industry of referral marketing. And man, it dramatically changed my life. See, I'm a guy, if you ever know me to be, if you ever met me in person, you know I am zero fluff. What you see is what you get. And so for me, when I say that, I mean that from the core of my spirit, because, you know, tough times don't last, tough people do, but the only way tough people become tough is being surrounded by the right tribe. And that's what this industry has done for me. It kind of cut the fat in my life. It got rid of bad habits, bad people, bad things, bad places in my life and replaced it with things of value. And so I don't know if that's you. I don't know if you're here because, you know, you got invited to get on a call to see, you know, this is more than motivation. This is more than inspiration. These are real life people speaking their truth. And so my truth is this, I did everything the right way, but one mistake cost me everything. See, I was put in a situation at 25 years old that I was going to have to face the consequences of my decisions. And see, for me at 25 years old, catching a DUI, it cost me everything. So my back was against the wall and I was looking for a way and I found it. Here we are seven years later. I've met people I would never have met if it wasn't for this industry. And that leads me right into who I'm about to introduce next. See, this call is not about me, it's about we. See, this gentleman I'm about to invite and get on this call with me right now. See, what took me a year to do, he did in four months in, in our previous endeavor, all right? He's a father of a two beautiful kids. He really is a father <laughs> of two amazing kids that I literally was able to watch grow up over these last eight years, seven years of friendship. And mind you, we met on Facebook. See, I was already involved in the idea that, you know, we were both in and we saw each other living the lifestyle that each other wanted and we just connected. You guys ever meet someone that you just connect like this and like you felt like you know him for forever, but you truthfully only known them for a certain short time? See, that's who this guy was, man. This guy is also a serial entrepreneur, a massage therapist, and more importantly, man, his heart is golden. If you know anything about Mr. Alexis Crew, just know this. If he cares about you, he cares about you. So without further ado, my brother from another mother, put your hands together for Mr. Alexis Crew. Mr. Alexis Crew, did you make the call? Hey, what up, mate? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, what's good, what's good. Thank oh you. my God, that cannot be your background. <laughs> Let me turn this off, let me turn this off, because you don't know, we, we already know we clowns, so no, no, wait, wait. <laughs> oh, you gotta love it. What's up, man? Nate, go ahead and say hi to Nate. 
Honey. Hey, sweetheart. Hello. <laughs> All right, guys. So, yes, man, I appreciate you, Nate, for that awesome introduction, brother. So, man, look, what's good? What's good? What are we doing today? What's good? What's good? Hey, listen, man, all we want to do right now, man, is, is I want to highlight why that smile is so big. What I would like you to do is, man, first of all, I know who you are, but I know there's a lot of people on this call that don't know who you are. So if you don't mind telling us, man, who is Mr. Alexis Cruz? Man, so, um, okay, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm all about, you know, helping people, guys. So for those who don't know who I am, I've been a part of this industry now seven years now. Um, Actually, what's cool about it is I didn't know nothing about network marketing. A guy named Roscoe Taylor shared this concept with me. And I've, you know, I've known Roscoe for years now, you know, 15 years before that, playing basketball on the courts. But he was broke, busted, and disgusted, sleeping on my friend's couch. That's how, that's the Roscoe I knew. Y'all knew a different Roscoe. I knew that Roscoe. And I used to pick him up from the basketball, or from my friend's couch to bring him to the basketball courts, pay for his meals and then bring him back home. So, you know, that was like our lives. We were doing a lot of stupid things growing up. And uh, um, and then, you know, he left. He left in a white Bonneville with hair, came back bald in a BMW. <laughs> Talk about travel fun and money and hooping. So obviously his life changed. I wanted to find out what it was. Hold on, my daughter's bus just came. Go ahead, sweetie. Hey, I love you. Oh, hey. Love you, my boy. Love and you, Mars. Love you. Um, so where was I? Oh yeah. So. Uh, Sharing, he shared the concept with me. I wanted the life that he had. Sorry, they beeping a the horn at these cars driving by my daughter. I got to watch her, make sure she's good. Okay. So yeah, he shared, shared the concept with me. Um, and uh, I, I mean, he didn't come back saying, he didn't come back saying, hey, I'm rich. I'm traveling the world. I haven't worked a job in the last five years or whatever the case is. He just, he's just started living the life in front of me. That's all he started doing. And I got curious and I asked him what it was that he shared, you know, what he was doing. And he introduced me to this whole thing of uh, referral marketing. And I started meeting some people along the way. I started learning some different things. And I remember some few things that I started learning. This is a real call, by the way, guys. This is like, there's no fluff and buff. Things are happening. You know, it, it is what it is. But he started sharing some things, right? And I started learning really quick that I wanted the life that he had. And I started notice, noticing that the circle that he had was a lot different from my circle, all right? So I had a lot of people that were, you know, I'm not gonna say they were average, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I started learning that average people hang around other average people so they could justify each other's averageness. That's the group I was hanging around, all right? That's the type of call, or that's the type of people that, that I was literally surrounding myself for life. You know, Roscoe was like the most successful person that I, I knew at that point. And, he, and I haven't seen him in over, you know, four or five years. All right. So when he came down and introduced me to that group, I started opening my mind a little bit to seeing what, what he was doing. So then um, I started surrounding myself and started coming across different people. I joined the concept and I'll never forget, man. Uh, he asked me, are you ready to get started? And I, I literally told him, I was like, yo, you just gave me a choice to win. Losing becomes an option at this point. I'm not going to choose to lose. I jumped in head first and I just asked what it is that I needed to do to get that lifestyle. And uh, he just flat out told me, he's like, all right, cool. He said, look, the reason why people will never become who they want to be is because they are too attached to who they used to be. And because I and he told me that because I didn't want to be that dude in front of a room talking like talking like Roscoe. He was talking certain that type of ways that I'd never seen him talk. All we talked about was hooping and basketball and selling things that we shouldn't be selling. You know what I'm saying? And when he started talking this way, it started hitting me certain ways. And I was like, OK, I got to leave everything who I was in the past so I could become the person that I need to be. I got to forget everything. I can't let my past hurt, mess my future up. So I started unlearning everything I learned and uh, I started surrounding myself with that. And, and in the process, I started meeting people. And then within the first three weeks or three months, I qualified for this lifestyle bonus uh, of a BMW. Um, in my fourth month of the concept, I hit a goal of mine. My first goal was to make at least $2,001. That was my goal because that was my half of the bills. I figured if I could hit that goal, I could quit my job and I could be free. If you make a dollar over your bills to me, that's freedom. If you make a dollar residually over your bills, that's freedom. I can leave my job and I can still go to the beach and still have my bills paid. That to me was it. That was life for me. So, and I'm not telling people here to go quit their jobs. What I'm saying is find a little insurance in case your job quits you. Or if you're working a nine to five for them, what are you doing from five to nine for you? That was my mindset. So when I broke free, I figured like I could start living the life that everybody deserves so they could ask me how I live it. And then that's it. And if they tell me no, they could watch me. And they could, they could watch me and they could continue liking my pictures because when they like my pictures, they're promoting me. That's the way I started building my business. And then that's when I came across Nathan Galan. I'm thinking I'm over here in Tampa 
representing, killing things. I got this new thing now. I'm out there living the world, you know, living life, traveling, enjoying this, posting pictures, you know. And then uh, I see on Facebook, I see a video of this Puerto Rican dude on a jet ski. And now, in the, you know, in, 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 it wasn't all like for me, the business in the beginning, it wasn't all, you know, fireworks and sparkling, you know, this, it wasn't all gravy. You know, I was going through some, some trials and tribulations. But when I seen this dude on a jet ski in front of the Atlantis in the Bahamas, talking about this is for all y'all that thinks it's a scam, Man, takes off and it shows this blue sign. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. I was like, yo, I'm going through that nonsense too. And when I see, and I was like, Boricua, and I put the Puerto Rican flags under it and it was a wrap. He sent me a message back talking about you and this too. I was like, yo, I'm in it. I'm going through all bunch of people talking about, you know, it's a scam and this, that, and the other. And I heard one of our closest friends actually, it just hit me now saying scam is still confused about money. Our whole, our homegirl Pam says that. Um, wow, it just hit me now. But anyway, so I sent them that message. He's like, yo, I'll be back in Florida. We need to link up. I was like, what you mean you're in Florida? You're in Florida, like Tampa, Florida? He's like, no, nah, I'm in Lakeland, which is like 30 minutes away. And I was like, wow, this is going to be amazing. So now I figure it, he's been in the game longer than I have. I know Roscoe's killing it, but if I could relate to another Puerto Rican, you know what I'm saying? Me and him a lot more, you know, a lot more in common. That's cool. So he came down, come to find out he, but he knew a lot. He started directing me and, and, you know, the places what to do and what not to do. He didn't, you know, he, I'm not saying he is a failure or nothing like that. He failed his way to success. Like he did a lot more things. He's been in the game longer than I have. So he wasn't going to show me the wrong way where to go. My success to you right now, guys, is, I mean, I dedicate a lot, most of my success to this guy, Nathan Gallant. Like when I tell you, he took me under his wing and it's, it's crazy. The whole OBT, we've been doing that. One big team, one big family. We've been doing that from get since day one. We don't financially incentivize off of anything, but wherever he was, I was, wherever I was, he was, he was, when I tell you, and he'll tell you right now, I wasn't this guy speaking on a call and you could tell I'm still fumbling through my words, but I was that dude called whispers. Like I would be talking down. I wouldn't make no eye contact. I wouldn't, that, that was just me. But again, guys, like I started surrounding myself with people like that, Roscoe, Nate. And then I started, you know, I met, I came across Michelle Grant and Darren Walker and, and Pamela Pacheco. And these are like the J-A-O-N, Jamie Estrella. These are like J Jared Ojeda, my cousin committee. These are like the six or seven people I started surrounding myself with. And I started noticing that my knowledge of the game started elevating. My de desire started elevating. My passion started elevating. Why? Because you're either thermostat or a thermometer. Man, I feel like I'm preaching in here, Nate. My bad. But oh, you're, oh. Either, you're either a thermostat or a thermometer. You, if you surround yourself around these people that outthink you, you're going to win at all times. Because if you fail around them, they're going to pick you back up and point you the right way. And that's what I felt like I started getting right now. Because look. A thermostat or a thermometer, a thermostat sets the tone, sets the climate, and everybody adapts to the climate that they set. Everybody adapts, right? So a thermometer just tells the temperature. So if I'm in this group that we are in, Secret Society, you know, so we're in this group, and Nate is in there putting people in left and right, left and right, of course, he does set the tone. He doesn't set the pace, and I don't want to be at the bottom of my group. So obviously, I'm going to try and keep up, and we just elevate each other. We elevate each other. We elevate each other. And before you know it, you guys are all winning at a high level. And that's the type of group I started surrounding myself because I started picking up their language. And the only reason why that started happening is because we all go to these trainings. Y'all know what's about to happen this weekend. I mean, it's it's about to go down. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Gunshot, blue, blue, blue. This man just went off. Let me pull it back a little bit. Let me pull it back, man. You, you throwing all these free gems out, man. We gotta say something for Elevate, man. Calm down, calm down. Say something for training school. Man, put your seatbelt back on. Man, the chat is going crazy, crazy. I just want to touch back on a few things. I want to circle back, man, because you're not just leaving your heart out here, man. You're leading with passion, man. You're speaking your truth. You said thermostat or thermometer. You get to pick which one you are. You also said average people do average things to justify their averageness. Whew. Man, isn't that the truth, man? I remember the circle I was hanging out with before. You know, I felt like I was the smartest person in my circle. I don't know if we have any of those type of people right now that, you know, you feel like you're always coming up with the resolution when it comes to your circle. If that's you, 
I'm here to inform you, like my Mr. Cruz just said, surround yourself with the thinking that outthinks you. If you're the person that's always setting the tone, you're always setting the vision, get surrounded by other people so you can take that vision and multiply it tenfold. All right. You also said set small, set small goals because they lead to bigger wins. I think sometimes as people, we have a tendency of, you know, overcomplicating things. You know, if you want to save money and you know the goal is 2000, don't overwhelm yourself with the 2000, break that thing down into two weeks. And now you know how much you need to save per day. Set small goals to lead to bigger wins. And one of the other things you say is, is do the right things because you attract the right people. I'm going to say that again. Do the right things because you attract the right people. Can everybody hear me okay? Make sure we're okay. I know I got Mr. Cruz there. All right, do the right things because you attract the right people. I can, man, I don't know that I know that I know. Almost everybody on this call can relate to that when it comes to that because you surround yourself by the wrong people, you have wrong results, all right? But the right people, that's so important. That's what really, really took my business and my personal growth to another level, Lex. And I think you can attest to that as you just, you emphasize on it is that we didn't make no money off each other. There was no incentive off of each other. It wasn't, oh, I'm going to be around you because I make a dollar off you. No, this was pureness. This was purity. This was, I want to help you. You help me. Help me help you help us so we can help more people. And that's the thing that we we uh, we took in. So, you know, that was your story. But I, re I really want to touch on, you know, the fact of how it's not just you winning, all right? It's not just you and your team winning. I want you to touch on, you have a whole family affair going on when it comes to what you got going on, man. And to me, it's most one of the most admirable things. And I'm getting goosebumps as I say this. These are real goosebumps. It's one of the most admirable things I've ever seen. Because here's the thing about Mr. Cruz. Mr. Cruz is just not just winning by himself. He put his family in position to reap the benefits off of what not only he does, but his organization does because of the leverage that referral marketing offers. See, there's a lot of negative cognitives when it comes to you know referral marketing, but if you do this thing the right way with the right people, you get amazing results. And so Lex, I wanted you to touch on that, man. You know, you recently just hit a significant rank in this company and you're doing it very fast, brother. I mean, so I want you to share on that, touch on, you know, you just um, hit the rank of gold, but it wasn't just you. I want you to share with the people what I got to witness over the last three days leading up really Monday night. So if you could just break that down to me, brother, the floor is yours. Oh man, yeah, it's, that's, man, that's one of the most emotional things for me because that's the reason why I started this in the beginning because I mean, my my family, like we had, we didn't come from money. Um, we were all right, you know, we, we were just, you know, just, you know, we were just making it, we were doing good. I mean, we were excited about it, you know what I'm saying? So when I seen it, uh, the concept, I just made sure I'm very good with duplicating, duplicating. Uh, Roscoe is, you know, I just, I wanted that life and I asked him exactly what I wanted. Oh, we got you. Yeah, you're muted now. Let me, uh, nope. You muted. I'm good. Now you're good. There you go. Take off. All right. So, um, I made sure in the beginning that I, I wanted to position myself because, okay, so I told a story not recently, uh, recently. When Roscoe came down, there was an event that he did. And this, just to go back real quick, um, when he, there was an event that he did and he invited me to go to another important event in his life. And I told him I didn't have PTO, right? And this is where my mind just blew up. He didn't, I didn't have PTO. And he said, what is PTO? I was like, Roscoe, that's paid time off. You know what paid time off is? He's like, they do that? And he was really confused. And I mean, he didn't know at all what PTO is because that's how long it was since he worked the job. And I was like, wow. My mind blew up right then and there. And I was like, look, and I'm looking at all his friends and his family, his mom, dad, I'm looking at his cousins. And I'm like, do these people know what PTO is? They're like, well, some do, some do, I'm sure. But no, they all have control of their lives. They're all going to be there Monday. I need you to be there. And I was like, you got to be kidding. None of these people got jobs. And he's like, no. I was like, all right, I'm sold. What do I got to do to get my family to get like that? And that's when he laid it out on the floor for me. And uh, so what I did is I made sure when I joined the concept, um, and I know a bunch of my family's socials, and my mom is the G with it. So she has everybody, you know? So I was like, yo, so mom, dad, I need you in first. Cool, they got in. Cuzzo, got you in. Brother, got you in. Cousins, got you in. And I was going down the line and Kamitsi and Jada, uh, Kamitsi Ojeda and my cousin, or, and Jared Ojeda was in that, in that list. And I called, 
you know, I called and called and called and they were giving me notes. They were telling me no. They were telling me no. She would have told me no one more time. I would have just got her social through my godmother. My godmother's her mom. I would have got her social. I would have put her in too. Hold on. I want, I want to touch on that real quick. Your desire to see your family win was bigger than the excuse they had for themselves. I'm going to say that again because I, I, I know you. I know you on a personal level. And it gives, oh. You're your, not heart, to your heart for your family to make sure that if you won, that they were going to be there to win along with you. The conviction that you laid on them is what kept them around long enough to reap the rewards and what you're about to talk about. So I wanted to emphasize that because you didn't shun them. I know, and you're getting to the story, but I know in particularly one couple didn't do anything for about six months and even had a negative husband to, to go ahead and just add fuel to the fire that to not do anything. And you just, you didn't hate them. You didn't shun them. You didn't stop inviting them to events. You just loved on them. And you let them know whether you trust me now or not, you're going to be in position if I have anything to say about it. Whoo! Take notes. Man, I, I, I've been in this for seven years, bro. And then it's like these last two days, it's, it's finally coming out. You know, like people are finally starting to see like what, what it is and what, I, uh, what I've been pushing, you know? Oh. Wow, bro. This is, yeah. Golly. I, I, I'm mad at you right now, Nate. <laughs> no, man. No, no. Listen, bro. You got to understand your story is going to impact millions. You got to understand this, man. Like, this is the power of what we're in. And ladies and gentlemen, if you don't understand that, if you don't understand the leverage, see, he couldn't, he couldn't go to his boss at a job and say, you know what? I want my family to be just as successful as me. Make sure that you take care of them like you take care of me. See, a job wasn't going to do that. It's not to knock a job, but if you could control the controllables and you could pitch your family tree in a position to be changed forever, would you do it? Better yet, would you wait seven years of being consistent? See, I know you've gotten crucified about going to get another job. I see, I know you've gotten crucified about missing a car pay. I see, I know you've gotten crucified by the people that tell you, see, why don't you just go back to the land of the common man? Why don't you go back, Lex? Because Lex had a vision. And the vision is just starting to come to fruition. If you think it's pretty now, wait to what we do in the next couple of months. So Lex, I love you, bro. But continue the story, bro. So, um, yeah, man. And, uh, and like I said, I, I'm trying not to get emotional about it, but that, this is, that exactly, that's exactly what my vision was. So for them, to, you know, uh, for them to tell me, no, I knew exactly what I was, doing. I knew they didn't know the, my desire, my passion inside. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just like when you're playing basketball against me, you know what I'm saying? You don't know what kind of Lex is going to come out. I might come out, you know, chill, relax. You might come out and play all kinds of crazy defense. I might come out there and try to dunk the ball, whatever the case is. I might just go out, there, you know what I'm saying? But what my family didn't know is I knew what I just seen. I seen a boy, Roscoe, broke, busted, and disgusted, sleeping on a friend's couch, turn into something where he's now making what people make in one year. He makes it one month. I seen that with my own eyes. I moved him into two, three different IMB homes. I seen that. I helped them move. But yet someone's got the nerve for me to tell me that this isn't going to work. I once heard if you buy a broke man's opinion, you bought their reality. I didn't buy nobody's opinion. I knew exactly what was going to happen. So what I did is I made sure I put my family in first. I tell everybody in my fast start trainings, I put your family in first, regardless of what they say. It's $50 for the year. That's it. $50 for the year. Get their souls or put them in. Why? Because you know what you're about to do with this concept. You just know. I know. I've seen it. It's happening. So that's the passion. And, and that's what I did. I made sure I put them in first. And it, it's crazy because now everything that I've been doing these last seven years, we didn't know we was going to be put into this concept, you know, with the skincare and the nutrition. We didn't know that was going to happen. That's just an additive. That's the icing on the cake. You know what I'm saying? So with this that's happening now, with this brand new comp plan, golly, this last week, it's just like all the hard work that we've been doing, all the hard work is now coming to fruition. I mean, tell you, my dad hit silver, my godmother hit silver. That is like 92% to gold right now, bro. Dad is silver, my godmother hit silver, uh, Jared or Jared killing the game gold. I mean, Cuzzo, Judy. Aunt Jackie, Bronze, Nate, she loves you to death. Uh, I mean, I, my family. I count, like, it. I count it. You have seven rank ups in your whole family. None, none below, from bronze all the way to gold. Multiple golds, multiple silvers. 
got ladies and gentlemen, let me go and put this in perspective because my boy Alexis, he he on one right now. His mom, his his mom, his dad, his godmother, his cousin, his one of his two of his cousins, three cousins, Marvin, Jared Ojeda, and Judy, all ranked up on Monday. What's ranked up mean? They hit a significant uh, milestone within our our um, lifestyle company, all because of a decision that was made seven years ago. I want to say, and I'm not gonna put his business all out there, but let's just say between the family, they made some good money. All right, <laughs> made some good money. And more importantly, it's not. It doesn't stop there. They're just getting started. So well, that main emphasis of that point right there, guys, is that let your convictions of win be bigger than your fear of losing. Mm. Let your conviction of winning be bigger than the fear of you losing. Stop buying the excuses of other people. I think I saw it here in the chat. Oh, somebody wrote it down. If you buy a broke man opinion, you buy a broke man's reality. Woo! Lex, you, you spoke the truth on that one, brother. Uh, so what I also want to touch on real quick before we head up out of here is, Lex, you're killing it. Your family's killing it, all right? But what do you credit your success? What, what do you credit you being here for seven years? What do you credit for you having that tough rhino skin to still be here seven years later? Because you've seen close friends come. You've seen close friends go. You've seen... You've seen friends talk stuff about you. You've seen people disappear, reappear, right? What has given you the fortitude? What keeps you coming back? You know what I mean? What, what kept you believing that this was going to be it for your family? Like, what allows you to continue being refueled again and again? Because we all know life hits us. Life drains the gas out of us sometimes, all right? And we feel empty sometimes. Where do you get that from? Where do you get that refuel from? And I have a great idea where it's coming from, but I want you to elaborate on it, brother. Um... I mean, really, it's just, you know, just just staying positive, saying, you know, sticking around the right people. And you know what? It's crazy. I got I got I got these quotes that I have by my door when I leave. Um, I love quotes. Uh, every time I leave to grab my car keys right there next to the door, it says, is what you're doing today getting you closer to where you want to be tomorrow? Motivation. That That's what motivates me. So if I'm about to go hoop or if I'm about to do something that's not income producing, then I'm going to bring my butt right back inside the house and make some calls and feed my business because my business is alive. How are you going to eat three to four times a day and your business not eat three to four times a day? Your business is alive. You got to feed it. You got to nourish it. You got to train it. You got to continue, continue doing what the necessary things to keep that thing alive. So for me, those quotes I have next to the door or, is, you know, um, the little things that we do right now today um, is what produces the results tomorrow that everybody wants. You know what I'm saying? So what are you doing when the lights are off, when nobody's watching? I got these certain things that keep me going and keep me motivated. and. Uh, and just experiencing when I look back, like, yeah, there's a lot of dead carcasses that you're going to come along the way. And those are the people that quit. But that should be a constant reminder of how far you've gone, that you didn't start to get to where you are right now. That's a constant reminder of how far you've gone, but you're going to continue going because the race is not finished. And I will tell you right now, for those that are new, that are in this concept, some people got invited to this call, don't even know what we're talking about. You know what I'm saying? But in this concept, get with whoever invited you to the call, but understand that most of your friends will never support your dreams until they see a lot of strangers celebrating your success. If they catch, I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a repeat that back because I see the look on your face. Maybe some of y'all might've caught it, not a caught it, but th that right there made me realize that not everybody's gonna catch your vision. Most of your friends will never support your dreams until they see a lot of strangers celebrating your success. We, Nate, Pam, all the people on this call are the strangers celebrating you walking across the stage at Elevate. We, so when your friends are asking you, who are all those people screaming your name? You could tell them those are the people that believed in you when you didn't. Yes. That's how you build this business. Those are my family. Those are my friends. They don't catch your vision. It wasn't for them to catch in the first place. It was God giving you that vision. They didn't see it. So they're mad at you because you changed. But yet you could be mad at them because they stayed the same. It's an even, even. Leave they ass exactly where they at and come back for them later. That's exactly what you do. And it's not their fault. That's their career. And that's what they are paid for. This is your calling and that this is what you was made for. You've heard the songs. If we all grind, we could all shine. We could forget a part time. Club secret just dropped. We can now focus more on our departure time. Shit, I was 37 vacations and 23 of them free. And we did that before we hit RMB. Nate, remember when we used to say where we was going to be when we hit IMB? I knew where I was going to be in Greece with my boys and with yachts lined up as far as that I could see. All I could see was IMD. Then I flipped my mindset from I to we. And now we still want to talk about products from the Dead Sea. Bars, 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 bars. Yo, 
bars, bars, bars. Ha, ha, ha. But think about it. what a lot of our friends were scared and confused. It caused division. My closest friends were scared and confused. It caused division. But we were more common collective because Wayne had division from get. And if you made it for the GPN summit, you realized that you would detach your emotions from it. It was the perfect decision. It was the perfect decision. With Wayne's master plan and Isaac's comp plan, that's one hell of a vision. Now, what was once theirs is now yours. What's your decision? I'm going to tell you what it did for me. It was the products from the Dead Sea. It's the Dead Sea. We only got one Dead Sea. One. There's mountains and shit. This is the lowest point on Earth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We got direct go access off. to it. Go we got off, direct bro. access to it. And mama always told me when you have a gift, when, the, when you find something that becomes easy to you, but yet amazing to the world, that's a gift. Let me show you how to open it. You could pick it, click it, go kick it, Tim. You could pick it, click it, they'll send it. Product-based, service-based. Yo, check out my Darren Walker face. Yo, if somebody don't get this man a record deal, man, this man out here dropping bars, yo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I had to do that. I had to hey, do that for Pam. Yes. That was for oh Pam. You got to do the fedora for Pam? That's for Pam. That's that. That's that. Uh, that's that Dominican look. Whippa. Hey. That's the time. Hey, but last night, as we wrap this thing on up, Lex, man, first of all, thank you for laying your heart out, man. I mean, this is you all the time. I'm happy the world gets to witness about 5% of what I get to witness all the time, man. Um, Lex, man, you're not short of an inspiration, man. You're such a blessing to my life. Um, I just want you to emphasize one more thing when we let these people go, because I'm telling you right now, people ain't at their desk like this right now. They ain't at home listening to turn up the music a little bit loud. I'm telling you, you brought my energy up this morning, man. Um, but as we leave the people, man, like you said, you had to become the person you needed to become so you could be the person that people could follow. All right. And so I know personally, you know, we made a lot of sacrifices when it came to making sure we go to trainings. You know what I mean? Me, you and I, we have this athletic background where we understand practice doesn't make perfect, perfect practice. Perfect practice doesn't make perfect, practice makes perfect, you follow? So we understood about pitting the time in the game, all right? And so we we just took that mindset, we put it into this. And so I know we've driven as far as Baltimore to go to trainings. I know we went to trainings with no money to eat, literally eating with a food stamps card for the entire weekend. Um, <laughs> I, I remember us sleeping on the floor. I mean, sacrifices to get there. So Elevate is right around the corners next week. You know, right now, you know, there's a lot of things that people could fall into. Oh, COVID, um, traveling. I know some people that are driving as much as 18 hours and bringing their kids just to make sure they're at training because where, you know, where you have, when you make a decision, there's no excuse that can get in the way. All right. So for those people that decide, all right, that decided to win at this, that decided to win in their life by using this vehicle, how do you feel when it comes to Elevate next week? Do you think it's optional or do you think it's almost mandatory to make sure that you attend this event and why? <laughs> I mean, look, and why? Like how you finished it, why, right? So it's huge, it's mandatory. It's, there's, no, there's no question about it, you have to, it's a must. Um, and I keep going back to, to the beginning because my very first training, I got to watch Michelle Grant, or now Michelle Taylor, um, walked the stage and that was my first training. Roscoe put his hand on my shoulder. He's like, yo, I need you to go to training. I was like, I don't need no training. I don't need no training. I'm good. I'm just going to go be ignorant. You know, I'm just going to continue doing what I'm doing. It seems to be working so far, but then he made me, made me go. So I went and I got to, I had my moment right then and there. I caught my moment. I had my moment at momentum. And, uh, when I seen Michelle bring her dad on the stage, it made me want to do that for my dad. It made me want to do it for my family. That's where it all stemmed from. So I came back home and I started putting in work and things started happening to me, you know, as you can see now, but obviously I'm not, I didn't, I'm a lot further than I was yesterday, basically, but elevate guys. It's, it's, a, it's mandatory to me. It's mandatory. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Get you, get out there, bring, don't just come alone either. Bring your team. Uh, it's a lot more different than what we we're doing, you know, prior uh, because obviously there's things that are going to be dropped at this training that it's going to be more beneficial for us that are people that are there than the people that aren't. All right. So, and we make, we also, they're going to be dropping stuff right then and there that your team's going to have first dibs on. And then everybody's going to uh, rank up right then and there at that spot. Whereas before it wasn't like that. So it's imperative. Uh, you catch your moments on your way to trainings, on the flights, you catch your moments after the trainings. That's where the most nuggets are dropped in the, in the groups, where you surround yourself in the huddles. Um, 
but yeah, it's definitely imperative. Don't, don't, don't go alone. Make sure you definitely get out there. Yes, Sersky. Yes, Sersky. I don't, don't miss the training, especially this one. This is going to be our first ever lifestyle company event. Um, if you don't know what we're talking about, make sure you get with someone that does. Um, Lex, again, bro, from the bottom of my heart, brother, you know, I words can't describe how much I appreciate you um, as a friend, as a brother. Um, you set me straight when I need to be set straight. And more importantly, man, you're an example of what a man should look like, how to operate, you know what I mean? Man of his word, integrity. And um, man, I'm blessed to call you a friend, G. So with that being said, man, whatever words you want to leave the people with, man, I, you should see this chat. I got people text me, send me the recording ASAP. I, I, I. Man, you've been killing it. So without further ado, man, the floor is yours, man. Leave it with the people. Oh, man, I just, I really don't even know what to leave right now, man. I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm humbled. I'm excited with everything that's about to happen, guys. So just get out there, follow the system. I know, I know times are hard. I know, I know, you know, things are holding you guys back. Cause I could feel it through this call. I don't know why I got this gift and a curse where I could just feel things and I could just feel a lot of pain going through right now. Just understand you have to go through whatever it is that you're going through right now. If you could hear my voice, I'm speaking to you. Go through it. God is redesigning you. He's remolding you into the person that you need to be. Just go through it. Um, because if you don't, if you quit, that person that's watching you is not going to believe that they can too. So when you do make it, you laid out the blueprint. Like I was saying earlier, you cannot minister to someone who's going through something that you have not gone through yourself. So just go through it. You are the serum solution for that one person. You have been bitten for the beaten, if that makes sense. So go through it redesigning you. You're being drawn back. I know you're being drawn back. You're like that bow and arrow. You're being drawn back. You're bound back. The bills are stacking up. The Cardinals two months behind. The dental game is back. Relationship issues. You just can't. If anything else drops right now, you're just shaking to the point where you just can't even do it. But you just tell yourself to pull back one more time. Just keep going and keep going. And eventually you're going to show the deal to a committee, a Jared O'Dea, Jada, or Nathan Galan, or Pamela Pacheco. And you take off and you exceed everything that you've ever surpassed, that's your wildest dreams, you exceed it and you take it and it hits a target that you thought you would never hit because that was God's plan. Just don't, just hold on, get through it. It's gonna, your, your, your time is gonna come straight up. Is that Jared raising his hand? Oh, look at Jared's on the call. Uh, that's Jared raising his hand. <laughs> I love you, bro. Thank you so much, man. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your servant leadership. Thank you for who you are and what you are, bro. Thank you, bro. Thank you so much for taking the time out and leaving your heart out with the people, man. Thank you so much. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for allowing me to be your guest host today. Um, as we all know, this is Miss Pamela Pacheco's breakfast call, okay? Um, right now she's with the family and I ask that you guys keep her in your prayers. Anybody that knows her understands that she is a soldier. She is a leader of leaders. Her heart is massive. And um, you know she would have loved to have been here on this call with you guys but she's taking care of her family. And I ask that you keep her family in your prayers as they grow through this time right now in need. Um, guys, this right here was one of the, the funnest calls I've done. Uh, Ms. Delicia Powell, thank you for your energy, sweetheart. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you for always being there, being a person that Pam can lean on, trust, and depend on. Um, guys, your breakfast has been served. Today is April 8th, 2021. God bless you, and I'll see you in Dallas. Love you, Pam.